Yeah, it's this way. <laughs> Much better. Not, not your right, my right. The not, other right. <laughs> the other right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Adam Ellis. What an outstanding human being. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Sisney High School for tonight's non-conference matchup between the Potoka Warriors and the Sisney Running Lions here on Wabash Catch TV. My name is Bruce Dickey, joined by Jamie Hodges. We do appreciate you tuning in tonight. Jamie, Potoka comes in with an 8-11 and record, Sisney at 10-10. and This is the kind of fun contest where you uh, see it, where you you kind of get gauge where you are coming into the uh, regional, isn't it? Well, yeah, like you mentioned the records, but also importantly, you can look at the last five. Yeah, that we have, and Potoka and their last five um, are one and four. Whereas you look at Sisney and Sisney's three and two. Right. And then scoring average, if you look at the scoring for both squads, Potoka's putting up a lot of points. They're getting about 58 points a game. Uh, there you see, folks, they got 1,119 points for. They're, give, they're getting 58.9 a game, but they're giving up 60. In this day and age, in Class 1A basketball, 60 points is a lot of points to give up. Yes, it is, Bruce. That means there's a lot of up and down the floor and usually a lot of turnovers involved. And then you look at the Sisney running lines, uh, uh, their average score per game. They're picking up about 48 a game. They're giving up 45. And, and that really just kind of goes to uh, Kevin Bowen's defense and the way they like to play. That is true. And I believe last year we were here doing this game. I believe you're – well, was it or, here? Must have been. Two years ago. We did a, We ago. did an overtime game between yeah. Potoka and Sisney. Yes, that's great. And it, it was, might have been was, here. It, it was a very was good game. Year. Uh, outstanding game. And, and, you know, that's the, the fun thing. These two teams are not in conference. And Potoka, they used to play each other just about every year at the Conrad Allen Holiday Tournament. Potoka has since left the Conrad Allen Holiday Tournament. Sisney's still there. But th- this gives uh, these two teams a chance to uh, all get together and, and, uh, and re rekindle old rivalry. That's, That's sure. always fun. That is fun because in the past there's been several close games. There are two teams that are built pretty similar, as we'll see, right. and they like to play kind of the same style of basketball. Sisney's probably going to be the uh, smaller team of the bunch. Sisney, and I have a, 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 I have a feeling I know why, Sisney didn't put the heights in their program this year. And I think that's because they 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 start a couple of senior or pardon me a couple of guards who are not that tall but, but have played forever. Jesse Milner and Jace Hatcher, a sophomore and a junior, uh, respectively, and those young men know where the other one's going to be. It's like uh, your right hand knowing where your left hand's going to be when well, you're clapping. They've played together since fifth grade at least. Yeah, on the basketball court. Yeah. Uh, so it should be a fun one tonight. The uh, running Lions head coach by Kevin Brown. The Potoka Warriors coached by Joey Eddy. And we'll have the national anthem for you in a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sisney High School. Tonight's contest features the Warriors of Potoka. And your own Sisney Running Lions. At this time, please rise for the singing of the national anthem by CHS freshman Tisha Hurl. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming in the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star 
Tisha Hurl with our national anthem and with the starting lineups, it's Mr. John Hutton, the teacher here at uh, And now Sisney. the starting lineups first for the visiting Warriors. One guard, number double zero, senior Hunter Jolliffe. Another guard, number two, senior Tyler Alexander. One forward, number 12, sophomore Drew Belcher. The other forward, number 14, junior Jordan Gebke. And at center, number 30, senior Colton Hill. The Warriors are coached by Joey Eddy and assisted by Micah Schnatz. And now the starting lineups for your running Lions. One guard, number three, sophomore, Jesse Milner. Another guard, number five, junior, Jace Hatcher. One forward, number 35, junior, Brendan Potter. Another forward, number 30, sophomore, Gavin Featherling. And at center, number 33, junior, Connor Brack. The running Lions are coached by Kevin Bowen and assisted by Kyle Sessions and Lance Ensley. Tonight's officials are Dennis Estes, Steve Baker, and Darren Greenwald. Good crew of officials on hand, Dennis Estes, Steve Baker, and Darren Greenwald. I uh, didn't mention, by the way, Jamie, in the junior varsity contest, it was Patoka over Sisney, 53 to uh, 22. That game was close for about a quarter and a half, and then uh, you showed up, and all of a sudden Patoka started scoring, and Sisney didn't. So you're saying I just need to go ahead and go? <laughs> I'm just because I can. I'm just saying that the, the, I'm not saying that there was anything to do with the other. We were mentioning during the break, Bruce. It's kind of neat. Sisney's one of the few places you still come to where they have the, a student singing the national anthem that's instead right. of just a recording. I think that's kind of cool. They do a really nice job. That was Tisha Hurl, and a freshman. Uh, I've had her on my show before, and she does an outstanding job. And uh, one of the cheerleaders here does a nice fine little job. plug there. Uh, well, like the, the show Big Talk with Bruce Dickey, <laughs> weekdays at 9 a.m. Uh, getting ready for the opening tip. It will be Connor Brack yeah. jumping it up for Sisney. Thank you. And he's jumping it up against uh, Colton Hill. Sisney wins the tip. It will be a running Lions basketball to start things off. Nice drop pass. Ooh. Down to uh, intended for Hatcher, locked out of bounds through Hatcher's hands. It was a good idea. Good effort. Good looking play. It developed well. Patoka will bring it up. That's Hunter Jolliffe into the corner who finds Colton Hill. The Patoka Warriors in their road uh, green uniforms with green numerals and gold trim. You our, know how I like that. Of, our favorite kind yeah. of uniform. We love that. That's for sure. Easy uh, in, on the eyes. In the corner with it, Jordan Gebke tosses it back around. Uh, Jolliffe over to Alexander. Now again to uh, Colton Hill. Cross court, good ball movement by the uh, Warriors. A little bit more patient than I expected. Well, sissy has got it packed in, Bruce. Two-pointer on the way. No good from Hill and a foul underneath is going to go against Hunter Jolliffe. J-O-L-L-I-F-F. -F. Six-foot senior. Both these teams uh, well, Sissy with a height advantage at the on the front line but uh, Patoka with a height advantage out again amongst the guards. But once again, Sissy's guards are used to that. They're used to playing against that. That's correct. Jace Hatcher with it out on the left wing. Tosses it over to Brendan Potter. Potter back over to Hatcher. Finds Brack down low. He puts it up. And in the hoop, Sissy takes the early lead. 
2-0 just a minute 15 into the game. Alexander will drive to the hoop, and he's going to be fouled. I believe that's probably going to go against Jace. I check that. It's going to be a reach on Jesse Milner. And uh, first foul of the game, Jamie? Second. Really? Each team has one. Okay, I guess that's right. Yeah. Each team with a foul. I wasn't paying attention. That's fine. Jumper from Alexander in the corner is no good. Rebound to uh, Milner. He sprints down court. Leaves it over for Featherling. He drives, gets it back out to Brack. Brack trying to work against Hill. Now uh, heading to the hoop. Featherling loses the handle. Taken out by Alexander. Sprints up court. Fancy dribbling. Nearly lost it out of bounds. Or he lost control and barely <laughs> kept it. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I met fancy dribbling just about off of uh, the official's leg. Milner with a quick steal. He heads down court, lays it up and in. You can tell the difference in tempo. Sisney's wanting to run. Stoker's wanting to slow it down a little. Which you would think, looking at their scoring, that that would be just the opposite. Exactly, yes. Patoka being very patient on offense. On the drive, that's Gebke, and he oh, commits an oh, offensive foul. Great job by Jace Hatcher to get down in the way. So, Patoka with two quick ones here. Five minutes, 51 seconds to go here in the early going. It is Sisney with the early lead and bringing it across the sophomore, Jesse Milner. By the way, sophomore, sophomore, junior, junior, junior for the running lines. Nice in the in the pass. Down low to Brack, and he's going to be called for the push off as he uh, dropped Jordan Gebke to the ground. So each team with two fouls here in the early going. Three seniors for Patoka, a sophomore, and a junior in the starting lineup for Coach Joey Eddy's team. Coach Eddy's been there quite some time now. And if Brack doesn't lose, lower his shoulder, that's not a foul. No, that that's was, right. That was a mistake now, and, made and there. And he earned it. He did yeah. earn that and foul. And he popped him. <laughs> yeah. He gave him a good, nice little shove. Colton Hill fires it across. Gebke into the corner. Nice pass across the hill. He puts it up and in. Good job by Hunter Jolla finding Hill underneath. And the first basket of the night for Potoka. Five minutes to go here in the first quarter. Miller will uh, walk it across to the right side, heading to the hoop. Potter backs up. Fadeaway won't fall in the rebound to the Warriors. Alexander quickly up to Jolla to the hoop up and in. See, now that's the kind of speed we're expecting. Now, now both teams are picking up the there pace. There you go. Or Mitch Sisney might slow it down now. 4-4 on the scoreboard, 4-44 whenever it was up there. On the drive, that's uh, Miller, and he throws it away. Intended outside for Brendan Potter. Good catch by Steve Baker, the official. How about that? Steve Baker, former basketball player, had his picture in the local paper last night from his playing days back in high school. Played in a little bit of college ball, too, didn't he? Or walked on or maybe just went down there and watched Yeah, at SIU. Pass across, a oh, shot nice won't block. go for Hill. Nice block, exactly. Connor, Connor Brack, Brack. Brack. Went straight up and a good block. No, co no contact on the arm. Milner will bring it across. Hatcher for three. It's too strong. Rebound, Brack. Good up and in. Brack coming out strong this game, Bruce. He cleared himself a little bit of room there again, didn't he, James? He got four of the six. Three on the way for Patoka. And Drew Belcher puts the Warriors into the lead. Seven to six, under four to go here in the first quarter. Hatcher will bring it across this time. Man to man employed by the Warriors. Off to the right side. Sends it uh, to Potter. To uh, Featherling now at the free throw line. Around to Hatcher, and he uh, walks with it out on the left wing. Well, I, it, that's one of those moves where occasionally they'll move that pivot foot. Yeah, that's what happened. He slid his pivot foot before he took off. And, so uh, with 330. Aaron Greenwald was right there. So yeah, it was right in front of him. Yeah. 330 to go here in the first quarter. 7-6 Patoka. Jamie was mentioning that last year's game went to overtime. Sisney beat Patoka 57-55 in overtime. And it's just this is two evenly matched teams. That's for sure. Into the corner. Three on the way. It's good. Make it a two. Make it a two. Jordan Gebke had his foot on the line. There's not a whole lot of room in either corner to get a three. 
Patoka with nine points, four different people scoring. That's pretty good. Three minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Three-point lead for the Warriors out there with the basketball is Potter. Brendan Potter, one of the three junior starters, drops it for Connor Brack, another of the three junior starters. He and Hatcher and uh, Potter, the sophomores, of course, and Milner and Featherling. So Featherling to toss in. Sisney down by three here in the early going, nine to six. And on the dribble, Milner looked like he had a lane to the hoop, didn't take it. Leaves it back for Potter. Off to Hatcher. What nice screen by Featherling for Hatcher up top. Milner will head to the hoop. Tough shot. No good, but he'll head to the free throw line for two shots. And who's is that going to be on 11? Two. Nope. So first one on Alexander, third one on Patoka. 224 remaining here in the first quarter as the sophomore heads to the line for two. Right-handed shooter cuts the lead to two. It is uh, nine to seven. Sisney head coach Kevin Bowen. He uh, was coached back in the 2000s. The decade of the 2000s left for, well, he didn't leave, but he left coaching for a few years and now back in for a few years. Both free throws good for Milner. Nice drive, Alexander. Puts it up from 14, it won't go. Rebound comes down to Featherling. Off to Milner. He sprints down court. Across the timeline, gets his defender turned. Back outside, three on the way. Potter, no good. And into the corner, Featherling was sprinting to the hoop. He went right where he was. He was doing what you're supposed to. He left his spot and crashed the board. Unfortunately, it (laughs) went to where his spot was. Yeah. And was crashing hard. Under two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Back into the game comes Hunter Jolliffe. Austin Hinkle also in now for Patoka, number 11. Alexander has it out on top. Gives it over to Drew Belcher. Now Alexander heads down the block. Shot's too strong. Rebound comes down to Sisney. Potter will bring it across. Fires ahead, and the oh. layup is missed by Brack. A little too far under the backboard, I think, Bruce. Kind of what it looked like. Belcher with it around to Alexander. They're looking down low for Hinkle, and he's fouled. That might be number two on uh, the big man, Connor Brack. Yeah, and it is. Second on him, third team foul. Brack coming out. Checking back in for Patoka, Colton Hill. Also, Jordan Gepke back in the game. Gepke with the ball. Back to Hill. Around to Alexander. Tries to drive down the lane. Loses the handle. Nice defense. Milner and or Hatcher with that sneak, with that slap of the basketball. 105 to go here in the first quarter. On the drive for the lead. The ball stripped away from Featherland. Here comes Jolliffe. Into the corner and stepped out of bounds, I believe. That's the thing folks got to get used to, isn't it, Jamie? A little bit smaller floor than they may be used to. Checking in for the first time tonight for Patoka is uh, Matthew Landreth, 5'8", junior. Also back into the game, the starter, Drew Belcher, 6'2", sophomore. Under a minute to go here in this first quarter. It's 9-8 in favor of Patoka, Sisty with the ball. They do not substitute terrifically often. Got Robertson for Brack because of fouls. Outside with it is Milner. Milner uh, drives to the elbow, nearly had it knocked away. Milner a little bit closer to the ground than most of the other players as Potter heads to the hoop. He's fouled, he'll head to the free throw line for two shots. I think it's number 30. Yep. Going to be on Colton Hill, his first, team's fourth. And to the line for two, Brendan Potter hits the first, ties us up at nine apiece. 33 seconds to go. Second one up coming. He hits them both. Good free throw shooting so far tonight. 
25 seconds to go on the drive. They drop it down, intended for Hill, stolen away by Potter. Across with it is Milner. They're, Milner they're has close it nearly. On him. Yeah, they're right on him. Nice work by Milner through traffic. Eight seconds back outside Featherling. Off to Potter. They got to get something going. Featherling will fire a three off the back iron. No good. And after one quarter of play. Oh, wow. oh. I almost gave up too early. Yeah. After a quarter of play, Sisney leads Patoka 10 9 back after these. At Clay City Banking Company, we're all on the same team, regardless of zip code. At home, work, school, or across the country, you can be part of our team with our cutting-edge mobile banking products. From your hand, you can check balances, transfer money, make deposits, and pay bills. Looking for a loan? We've got you covered with our mortgage, agriculture, commercial, and consumer loans. Join our team today. Play City, Floor, Louisville, and Fairfield Banking Companies. We're the hometown banks, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. At Back and Body Works Chiropractic, we help you feel better naturally. We can help your whole family from newborns to the elderly. We offer auricular therapy for smoking cessation and appetite control. We use acupuncture to improve health and well-being in the mind and body. We offer high-quality herbal supplements for adults and children, as well as CBD oil. We also offer exercise classes for women of every age, size, and fitness level. Stop by and see us on the square in Louisville. Call my mommy. And welcome back. Start of the second quarter. It will be Patoka basketball. Uh, Alexander, Tyler Alexander gets it up to Belcher. Three on the way from Colton Hill. No good. Oh. Nice rebound by Alexander. How did he come up with that? That ball's on the floor now. Held basketball. It'll be Sisney basketball. But, uh, boy, Tyler Alexander just went right over Hatcher now. Yeah, Hatcher had him blocked out well. Th that's what I thought. Hatcher Milner in the uh, game as yeah. Hatcher and Milner in the game along with Featherling Potter and uh, Preston Roberts for the running Lions. Bringing it across, that is Milner. Jesse Milner gets a screen to the oh, right there elbow. There you go. Nice move. Again. He's fouled again. He'll head to the free throw line again. And that's one thing that these Sisney guards do, even though they're not that tall, Jamie. Both of today, these guards, they'll, they'll find a way to get to the hoop and get to the line. Did they give that to 30? I believe they did it. Because I believe that's his second. I was going to say that, that he's coming out of the game. They're bringing Austin Hinkle back in, and he is coming in. You're right for uh, Colton Hill. Hinkle, uh, the senior, 5'10". Hill, Hill the uh, six-foot senior. But Colton Hill, thank you. Colton Hill, a... Uh, Strong kid, boy. You can tell looking at Colton Hill, he's like a farm boy. You know the best part about coming to Sisney? What's that? John Hutton. Ever takes, helpful. Takes care of us, making sure I had the right number for me. He just he forgot to bring popcorn tonight. Jumper is up and good for Austin Hinkle. It doesn't matter. He shouldn't have brought popcorn. We got free popcorn outside, uh, thanks of the some Citizens of us, National Some of us Bank. can't eat popcorn anymore. Oh, I forgot about that. Sorry, I shouldn't have mentioned it. Pass inside is knocked away, but uh, pardon me, is gathered, but the foul before the shot, and that's going to go against Austin Hinkle. Okay, Hinkle's first. Team six, so we'll be in the bonus the rest of the way for Sisney. We are tied at 11 apiece. Into the corner it goes to Milner. Back around to the left. Featherling drives on Hinkle. Offside of Roberts. Roberts heads to the hole. Wide open. Featherling misses the three. Rebound comes down to Patoka on the drive. Uh, Gebke gets it outside to Belcher. Off now to uh, Alexander. To Jolliffe in the corner. Back into the left corner. It goes to Hinkle. All five players have had a touch. Three on the way from Gebke is good. Gebke with the bomb from the left wing. Puts Patoka back in the lead. This is going to be one of those kind of games. It, so we're going to have one of those. One of those kind of games. The lead changes, ties all over the place. On the drive. Shot won't fall for Potter, but he'll head to the, again to the free throw line. And that's going to be number two on Jolliffe. 
So Patoka, I don't know how deep they are. Starting to get in some foul trouble, Bruce. Coach Eddie's been going a little deeper into his bench than uh, Coach uh, Coach Bowen will in his typically, but he's going to have to, isn't he? He kind of been forced to for this half. As Jolliffe does head to back to the bench, Matthew Landreth will check in. 5'8", junior, and the second free throw is good. One out of two for Brendan Potter. Alexander will bring it up. It's open to the middle. Stops at the free throw line. Three from the right side won't go this time for Gebke. On the board, that's Milner. He'll bring it across. Smallest man on the court. Fires it down low to Roberts. Back outside. Three from Potter. Off the iron. Boy, Sisney is not hitting their three-point shots tonight at all. No, but they're not missing them by much. It, just like that one looked good all the way. Up by two, here come the Patoka Warriors. Patoka in the green, Sisney in the home whites with orange numerals. And a hold, I believe, is going to be called on either Milner or Hatcher. Gave it to Hatcher. That'll be his first, team's fourth. That would have been two on Milner, right? Hey, yes. Yeah. yeah, so that worked out kind of how they wanted That's to. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Mr. Milner looked around after the whistle and said, hey, man, I didn't grab anybody. Out it goes to Hinkle. Around to Belcher. Off down to Landreth. Outside, and then Alexander had Gebke down low. Tough. Fade away. Will fall to Tyler Alexander. This is his own little homage to Kobe Bryant there. That was a tough little shot. That was a tough shot. 5.14 to go here in the first half. 16 to 12, the lead for Potoka. On the drive, Kevin Featherling lays it up and in. Much needed field goal for the running Lions. That's their first one of the second period. Yeah, it's been a while. Their other two points it. were on free Alexander, throws. another mid range jumper. I think he likes that spot. He sure does. And, you know, that's a, that is a skill that is uh, occasionally lacking in this day and age, the mid-range jumper. It's good to see somebody remembering it. With the basketball, oh, and he's undercut. That's going to be a painful foul on Gebke. And see how Jesse Milner gets up. Hey, that would look like he got stretched in the wrong direction. Guess what? That's the second on Gebke. And Coach Eddie's going to send him go back deeper into his bench for the first time coming in. Anthony Buonara, just a freshman. And I don't know, he certainly, Gebke certainly didn't try to do that on purpose. Oh, no, he, that was going hard for the ball. Milner went up. That wasn't a. Yeah, that was just an accident of twist. Four point difference. Now three. Milner will get a second free throw. It's, it's the bonus. How many team fouls was that on Patoka? That is now eight. 4.38 to go. Sisney might be shooting some free throws for a while. 18 to 15. 18-16. Alexander will bring it up. He has hit a couple of shots in a row from the left wing. That Picks a- it up. Gets it over to Buonara. Into the corner that's knocked away by Potter. What Potter tries to jump the lane. Oh, there's a little foot shuffle there that <laughs> Coach Bowen was wanting to be called. Alexander will toss in. Outside, he finds Landry. Into the corner, and boy, good defense again. Pot- Potter on the other side of the floor doing the same thing, basically. Brendan Potter basically denied the basketball to his charge. Alexander with it again. See how he goes to the hoop, and that's going to be a yeah. shove before the shot. That's going to go against Brendan Potter. That's his first, team's fifth. 4-16 remaining in the first half. It's 18-16. Potoka with a two-point lead. Alexander tosses it in. Gets it back on the give yeah. and go and travels. Got excited. Got happy feet. I got to tell you, that one looked a little bit more like a travel than the one on the other end. That one definitely was. That one definitely was. 4.05 to go here in the uh, first half. Milner with it out on top. 
Heads to the right side of the free throw line. Gets it over to Featherling. Tough drive through traffic. And that's going to hit the, uh, I think that hit something up top before it came down and out of bounds. Yeah, that we've was, uh, that. hit the little guide post up there. Yeah, we've seen like. that twice now. 18-16, Patoka with a two-point lead under four minutes to go. Glad they slowed down a bit so I could get a drink of water. That was kind. That was very kind. Matthew Landreth hands it off to Drew Belcher. Belcher just a sophomore, 6-2. He's the tallest player on the Warriors. Three on the way, won't go, and a nice rebound in the corner for Brendan Potter. Potter will bring it across. Yeah, Potter says, you guys, you guards get out of the way. I've yeah, got this. I'm, and he's heading to the hoop. Shoves off again. All Potter of a sudden, is uh, getting in trouble. All of a sudden, Potter has two. Team six, so Patoka will be shooting the rest of the way. 18-16, the score remains. And uh, that was team six, you say? Both teams yes. should be in, in the bonus now. As Alexander will bring it across, steps toward his left. Three for making a two from the corner. Won't go for Buonara. Here come the running lines. Oh, nice move. Milner to the hoop again. He'll head to the free throw line with another chance to tie. That's going to be the second on Alexander. Ninth on the team. So the uh, Potoka Warriors already with uh, two players with two fouls. They're going to send those two back in. Four. They've got four with two. Now. And they're all coming back in. Three minutes, six seconds to go. Coach Eddie's going to roll the dice. First free throw, no good for Milner. He has a second. How many of you think come up with their third foul? Oh. All. <laughs> the way this is going. Three players on the court with two fouls for Coach Eddie. He, I think he just threw up his hands and said, I may as well play him. Can't save him for the regional. On the drive, Gepke, the jumper, no good. Nice board, Colton Hill. He loses the handle but regathers. Outside, it goes to Belcher. Off to Jolliffe. Now to Hill. Hill on the left baseline, and he's going to be a foul to be a blocking foul. Against Brenda, pardon me, against uh, Gavin Featherling. Featherling's first. To the line heads Colton Hill. Six foot senior. Patoka's first trip to the line. Which is for one and one, right? Correct. Uh, the big senior uh, knocks the first one over the top of the front of the rim and into the hoop. Second one. Good as well for the right-hander. So back to a three-point game, 20 to 17. Two minutes, 35 seconds to go in the first half. Jesse Milner directs traffic. Sisney still with just one field goal this quarter. That's amazing. The rest of the points three. from the line. Well, they've got several from the line. Well, that's true. Milner on the drive to the left side. Hatcher back to Milner. Fake the three. Off to the right wing. Thinking about it, that was Terrence Martinez, and he throws it away. Stolen by Jolliffe. He heads up court. Down low to uh, Landreth. Back outside. Gebke three is off the iron. Rebound Hill, and he's tangled up. Fires it across to Landreth. Gebke, same shot. Different result. That's a make. It's 23-17 in favor of Potoka with under two to go here in the first half. Gebke with two threes this quarter. Milner to the right wing. Hatcher. Now's the time when Sisney wants to hit one of those three-point shots they've been missing. Ooh, a lazy lob across the top. Sisney retains. Hatcher for three. Too long. Rebound to Jolliffe. Here come the Warriors. Jolliffe up to Belcher, and he hits a three. Timeout on the court. Taken by Sisney. They trail by nine. Minute 25 to go. Back after this word. It won't always be new. It won't always be clean. It won't always be flawless. But it'll always be yours. So how do you know it'll be protected? To solve the big challenges of tomorrow, take simple steps today. At Country Financial, 
When you're ready to start, we're ready to help with auto insurance. See me, Alex Atwood, and Sisney for your insurance and financial needs. Welcome back to Sisney. A big run underway here for the uh, Potoka Warriors, Jamie. Well, Potoka has more points just in three-pointers than Sisney has this quarter. That's usually not a very good sign. That's not a good sign. As the uh, Warriors lead 26-17, I believe that's eight points in a row. I think it was 18-17 just a little bit ago. Sisney's down one. Now they're down nine. Milner with it out on top. Thought about chucking the three it won't, and uh, decided against it. Got a kicked ball. Sisty with uh, two of their starters on the bench trying to uh, make it through to halftime as uh, they're facing some foul issues. Connor Brack has been on the bench for quite some time. He hadn't played the second quarter, has he? No, he has not. Into the corner. Martinez fires it back out. Hatcher to Milner. Milner drives. Nobody nowhere to go. Across it now, there's it knocked away from Terrence Martinez, but he gathers now to Milner. He puts it up for 14. Good boy, they needed that one. Yes, they did. Cuts that lead to seven. 32 seconds to go in the first half. Jolliffe on the dribble, leaves it to Gebke. I don't see Patoka holding for one. Gebke to the hoop, he traveled. Looked like he was coming down, uh, Jamie, wanting to pass it somebody. It did, and he, he was trying to claim that there was a foul on Featherling, but he traveled before it even got to him. There was some contact, but you're right. But he traveled before yeah. there was any contact. Yeah. So, seven-point difference. Sisney down. They're going to look like they're going to hold for the last shot with just 15 seconds remaining here in this first half. They're going to try to see if they can't hit a three-pointer. They've been has been eluding them to this point. Off to Hatcher. Three on the way. Good. Half-court shot at the buzzer is no good. Big five-point exchange there at the end as the running Lions uh, came back from nine down. Now just four as we go to the half. You are watching Sisney running line basketball on Wabash Catch TV. I'm Bruce Dickey. That's Jamie Hodges. We'll be back with statistics and scores from around the area after these words. Welcome to Dane Building tonight. My dad and Ryan work here. They sell one bird, paint, doors, windows, pumpings, a little tickle. And much more. Oh yeah, they sell guns too. Zing Building Center on Ride 45 and Pools here. It's a cool place. We are monitoring all of your preventative health. I'm Marlissa Boyles. I'm a nurse practitioner here at Clay Medical Center, which is one of our 11 clinics out of the Christopher Rural Health Planning Corporation. We have implemented PCMH, Patient Care Medical Home. We work in collaboration with many specialists. This helps in tracking what you need for your age and any preventative screening. We'd love to have you there in our family. Visit us at crhpc.org. It is all things new at Zimdar's Heating, Air Conditioning, and Appliance Repair. We have a new line of heating and cooling equipment and new technicians. Our new equipment line offers 24 months free financing and excellent warranty coverage. Our experienced service technicians can provide you with quality service and repairs on all brands of HVAC equipment. Zimdar's has been serving Clay County and the surrounding areas for over 23 years. The employees of Zimdar's are here to help, so call local and call Zimdar's. When it comes to your banking, you have as many options as colors in the crayon box. That's why you can bank your way to Topless State Bank. What works best for you may be different from what works best for your neighbor. To Topless State Bank is built to serve all your banking needs, whether it's online banking, mobile check deposit, text banking, or just stopping in to see them at one of their three convenient locations. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender, it's to Topless State Bank. Banking made personal since 1913. 
Shide Diesel Service Company is your anything diesel full service center and fuel injection shop. Shide Diesel offers the quickest turnaround times to get you back on the road. Shide Diesel can service any diesel engine from agricultural, construction, heavy duty truck, and automotive. Let Shide rebuild your pump, injectors, or turbos. Need custom fuel lines? Shide has you covered. With a drive in service, they offer a variety of services, including oil changes, engine rebuilds, DOT inspections, and DPF cleanings. For unmatched quality, think Shide Diesel Service Company. Anything diesel. Are you tired of searching high and low in those big chain stores to find what you need and deserve some royal treatment? Come to the King, Rural King in Salem. The friendly folks at Rural King will never leave you searching for those hard to find items on your list. Farm, home, sporting, automotive, and clothing. Oh, and did I mention we also have everything else, along with all the quality brands that you deserve. Salem Rural King is a proud retailer of the steel product line. Your searching is over when you know the King, Rural King in Salem. I thought I'd lost my business in that fire, but my agent was there before the flames were out. He said, together, we're going to rebuild. Our employees depended on it. My independent agent and auto owners made sure we didn't skip a beat. I mean, we didn't miss a single payroll. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. North Wayne Insurance Agency in Flora is your local independent auto owner's insurance agency. Are you needing to advertise or promote your business or special event? At Meager Signing Graphics, they can print and install laminated vinyl on all sizes of metal, PVC, and plastic sign material. Meagers offers all types of vinyl options with professional installation on your vehicles, walls, and windows, or just about anything else you would like to be personalized. Meagers also offers all sizes of PVC and mesh banners. Meagers is now able to offer LED message centers. Stop in or call Kevin Blank or Danny King at Meagers Signing Graphics for all your lettering and advertising needs. Morton Building's annual sales event, Building Value Days, is going on now. If you're dreaming of a home and garage, farm storage building, insulated workshop, or even a horse barn or commercial facility, take advantage of discounted pricing on new buildings through February 29th. The quality of our materials, craftsmanship, and industry-leading warranty will ensure your satisfaction for generations to come. So don't delay. Contact your local Morton sales office or visit mortonbuildings.com and learn how you can build for less during building value days. When you want an honest deal in hometown service without the runaround, go to Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state-of-the-art tire and alignment technology. Lamont's always inspects your battery, antifreeze, wipers, and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LamontsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. Established in 1945 by farmers and folks like you, the primary goal of South Central FS has always been to improve the profitability of farming. And with a focus on service and safety, FS Propane is committed to keeping your system and appliances running efficiently. FS is a local full-service propane company offering you expert tank installation and system maintenance, as well as dedicated seasonal service. So when it comes to managing your propane needs, look to the experts. Look to South Central FS. Life is full of special times, and at Flora Savings Bank, we're here with you through all of them. Growing your family, finding that perfect home, taking that family vacation you've always dreamed about, or starting your own business. At Flora Savings Bank, we keep things simple. Our banking apps allow you to spend less time banking and more time with what matters most. Check out Flora Savings Bank 2.0 and get the best of everything. Caring bankers, great technology, and a bank that cares about community. Stop by the bank or apply online at florasavings.com. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Napa know-how. At Flora Auto Parts, you can count on the Napa know-how experts to have the solutions to keep you running on the road or in the field. More than just your car, your locally owned Napa store carries a large inventory of parts for farms, heavy trucks, and just about everything that moves. Experienced counter people understand your needs and are ready to help with the perfect part at a great value. That's Napa know-how at Flora Auto Parts. In 1916, Warren Miller chose Auto Owners Insurance. Later, his son made the same choice, as did his grandson. And today, his great-granddaughter did the same. 
As we reflect on where we've been, we're grateful to our independent agents and to those who put their trust in us and to the generations who will. Auto Owners Insurance. Harrison Insurance in Louisville is your local independent auto owners insurance agency. Country Roads Realty goes the extra mile to take you home. Managing broker Jessica McCleary, along with Terry Weedman, Judy Reed, and Brandon Klein, bring commitment, integrity, and results, as well as 21st century technology to the business of real estate. Virtual house tours are always open at countryroadsrealty.net. Call Country Roads Realty at 842-SOLD and give Country Roads the chance to earn your business and to add you to their long list of satisfied clients. Residents of the Clay County and surrounding area have relied on Clay County State Bank for sound professional service for over 100 years. With convenient lobby and drive-up hours, we are ready to serve you Monday through Saturday. We appreciate all who bank with us, and we look forward to the opportunity of working with anyone who is looking for a community bank to help with their financial needs. Give us a call at 665-3314, visit us online, or stop by and see us on the square in Louisville to experience our friendly personal service. Get ahead of the game at Carter Athletic Academy, where the goal is to transform you into the best young athlete you can be. Train for top performance in football, volleyball, soccer, baseball, and softball. Professional private lessons and clinics are always available with Carter Athletic Academy's expert training staff. Carter's exclusive hit track system brings skill development as well as exciting gameplay to batting cages. Plus, the Academy is the perfect spot for your special event or celebration. The Carter Athletic Academy in Fairfield. And welcome back here to the Sisney High School halftime. The uh, Patoka Warriors lead the Sisney running lines, 26 to 22. And uh, what do you think uh, Coach Bowen was telling the boys in the locker room, Jamie? Make a three. Make a three. They finally made one. They, they made one at an opportune time. Jay Satcher. To, to close the gap Jay at the Satcher end of the first half. Made one there at the end of the half. What do you think Coach Eddie was telling uh, the Warriors? Do not foul. They've got four starters with two fouls. Give us the stats. Tell me the statistical information. Well, Patoka has four starters with two fouls. Um, they've had quarters of 9 and 17. They've got six different guys in the books, so it's all kind of spread out. Um, Gebke, because of his two threes, is leading them with eight points. Sisney has Brack and Potter with two fouls each. They had quarters of 10 and 12. They're led by Jesse Milner with 10, and then a couple other guys with Four, three, and two. Milner able to get to the free throw line numerous times. And, and that's where he got most of his points. He only has two field goals. He only has four of those ten from the field. The other six were from the line. And actually, for their 22 points, what are there, eight out of, uh, eight from the, the free throw line or more? They and have nine two, from the free four, throw line. Four, six, eight, nine. Yeah. Nine from the line. So nine from the line that one three-point. Sisney getting it done at the free throw line. Well, I can look right here on – Mr. Hutton's neat little deal. How about that? John Hutton, the... Uh, uh, and they are 75% from the line, 9 out of 12. There you go. John Hutton, amazing. I don't even know why I'm keeping a book. Why are you I, keeping I really a book? don't. I We've can look right John here right on the there. iPad. John Hutton is a He's genius. He's got all the stats I need. Unbelievable <laughs> the, the amount of work that John Hutton does for us. We're hardly even necessary. And he was auctioning off pies at uh, halftime for Auctioning after off prom. pies and cakes and... Uh, what Some of those the, pies and cakes went pretty high. What can't the man do? Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Heck, he got a little bit of help from Adam Ellis. But, uh, uh, very little. They were, very little help from Adam Ellis. Some of those pies and cakes went for 150 bucks. Yep. That must what well, they put in that cake. I was in for like five. <laughs> and then I looked at my wallet and I was done. I was out. Oh, uh, should be a fun one here. Sisney has sent their starting five back out here to start the second half. Just... Jesse Milner, Jace Hatcher, along with Gavin Featherling, Connor Brack, and Brendan Potter. we got to give a quick shout-out to all the folks at the Dog Pound. Hey, how you all doing? Crowd, big crowd there watching us. Barney and the gang at the Dog Pound. We, we will do see you shortly. <laughs> Probably so. It's 26-22 as Patoka's coach, uh, Joey Eddy, will send his starters back out. Hunter Jolliffe, Tyler Alexander, Drew Belcher. Jordan Gebke and Colton Hill. Golly. And already a foul to start this second half. Gavin Featherling, fortunately for Sisney, that's just his second. That's right. his second. So now they have three starters with two. 
I'm telling you, fouls are going to play a huge part in this game as neither team goes very deep on the bench. And the troubling part for Cessna of that is all three of their big men have, three, have two fouls. Coming around the corner, Alexander puts it up and in from about 10. He likes that mid-range jumper. He certainly does. Bumps that lead back to six. It was as high as nine in the first half. Milner gets it across over to Potter. Back to Milner cross court. Hatcher, top of the uh, key for three. No good. Connor Brack gathers down low, puts it up and in. He's fouled. That's what Connor Brack can do, and they can't afford foul trouble. So Brack got the bucket, getting a free throw, and that is going to be the third on Jolliffe already. And checking into the game, Austin Hinkle. Heading back to the bench, Hunter Jolliffe, the uh, six-foot senior, being replaced by the 5'10 senior. A chance to cut it to three. Brack does. Connor Brack played about five or six minutes in that first quarter before picking up his second foul. It's back to a three-point game. Near steal by Brendan Potter. How many of those has he had now? I tell you what, he has. Uh, he's reading those lanes well is what he's, he's doing. Uh, he's seeing the uh, the passing lanes quite well, stepping in front of the receiver. And speaking of that, he just did it again. There you go. Another steal for Potter. Quickly up to Hatcher. Back out to Milner. Three on the way. That one rolls in. We are tied 28-28. Seven minutes to go in the third quarter. That nine-point lead has uh, disappeared as the running Lions back into the uh, second quarter on an 11-2 run. Alexander puts it up from 14. Boy, he is a good shooter in that mid-range. Check that. That was uh, Drew Belcher, wasn't That's it? Belcher, yep. So uh, the Patoka Warriors back into the lead. Hatcher looking down low, back outside to Milner. They play some catch. Three on the way from Hatcher is good. The running Lions heating up. Here in this second half. Bowen must have been listening to us. Uh, he, I, you know, he was. Of course he was. Belcher with it. Off to the left side to Hill. Down low. That's Hinkle back out to Belcher. Three is long. Rebound. Hill somehow gathers before touching the wall. Gebke. Three-pointer is good. He's fouled. And he'll go to the line for the end one. You don't see that terrifically often about one out of every and be the four or five one. games. Yeah, that'll be the second one on Hatcher. To the line for the end one chance to bump it back to a four-point game. Jordan Gebke, and he does so. He's pretty hot from behind that three-point arc too, isn't he, Jamie? That's his third one of the game. Milner over with it to Hatcher on the left wing. They trap him. The uh, Patoka Warriors in the zone. Three on the way from Potter. No good. Boy, what a nice rebound by Brack, and he throws it away. Near steal. Now it is taken away. Gebke up ahead to Alexander. He lays it in, and he's fouled. Count the hoop. And that, I believe, is going to be three against Brendan Potter. Unnecessary foul there for Potter. Yeah, you got to let that one go. You're right. He was kind of beaten down court, and there was not much he was going to be able to do. Free throws no good. A rebound gathered by Sisney. They had tied it at 30 moments ago. A quick six points for the uh, Potoka Warriors. On the drive, Milner gets his man in the air, puts it up, hits the J. 36-32, five twenty-five to go in the third. Off to the left wing. That's Belcher working against Featherland. Now to Gebke, drives around Hatcher. Back outside, Belcher. Gebke. Gebke around his man, around the screen. Jumper is good from about 17. And timeout on the court taken by Patoka. We'll take one as well. Back after this word. Make Carnaby Square in downtown Fairfield your fashion leader. We're the little boutique with the big inventory of beautiful, trendy outfits and clothing in a wide rate of your favorite name brands. And don't forget our large selection of jewelry and accessories. Carnaby Square is Southern Illinois' largest dealer of Brighton. At Carnaby Square, we take pride in our one-on-one, -on -one knowledgeable customer service and look forward to helping you create your own special look. Plus, always free gift wrapping. Find endless gift ideas 24-7 at CarnabySquare.com and on our Facebook page. Shop the fashion leader in downtown Fairfield. Field, Carnaby Square. 
Well, I promised you scores from elsewhere. At the half, Fairfield leads Johnston City 48-26. to 26. That's it? A 48-point half for the yeah. Mules. I, that's it. Landon Zerlini has 23 points for the Mules. Wow. So Sisney with it. They get it up to Brack. Drops it for Featherling, who lays it up and in. Six-point lead reduced to four. Across with it. Alexander, the runner to his right. Boy, Alexander and Gebke are on fire here in this half. At six already in this third quarter for Alexander. About three and a half minutes into the quarter, and each team already with a ton of points. What was it, 26-22? Yes. Jumper is up and no good. Brack knocks it to Hatcher. In traffic, Milner fakes the three. Back outside to Hatcher, he gathers to the left or the right wing, to the hoop, Featherling, and that's able, able to freeze his defender. Well, that's where you see the fouls in play. Forty he, he to thirty-six. Him. Yeah, Hill didn't want to pick up his third, did Correct. he? Correct. Hill with it, pass intended for. Uh, well, that was intended for Drew Belcher. And he's fouled by Featherling. That's three on Featherling, four on the team. So the uh, running line's going to foul a minute right now here in this half. They trail by four, 40 to 36. Belcher leaves it for Alexander. From the corner, it's good. About a foot inside the line. They make it a 17-footer. Bumps it back to a six-point game, 42-36. Pass dropped down to... Brack, he's fouled. He'll head to the line for two. That is the first foul on Belcher. I think the only guy on either team with one foul. <laughs> I believe you're right. 42 to 36. Connor Brack to the free throw line. The Sisney Jr., probably about six feet four. They are not listed in the program, but I'm guessing six three or six four. One more remaining. It's a five-point game. The right-hander leaves it a five-point game. Somebody stepped in early. Violation. Brack's going to get another opportunity, and it looks like it was Gebke, wasn't it, that came in early? I believe so. No Belcher. It wasn't Gebke 14? Oh, I thought they called 12. That may have. And it costs Patoka as uh, Brack hits it on the second try. 42-38, four-point lead for Patoka with the ball. Gebke to Belcher. Belcher uh, guarded by Fedlin. Bounce pass into Hill. Works against works against Brack. Shot won't go. Good rebound by Potter. Here come the running lines. Chance to cut it to two or one. Hatcher to cut it to one. Good. Three-pointer. It's 42-41. Three minutes to go in the quarter. Sisney already has 19 points. There's a steal taken away by Milner. He heads up court and has to regather. Gets around the official and tosses it back out to Hatcher. For the lead, three on the way, no good. Rebound to Gebke. He'll uh, take his time, ease through traffic, heads to his left. Hands it off to uh, Landreth. Off now to Belcher. They set a screen down to Hill. He's a long way from the hoop. He's close enough. Nice move to the hoop as he had Brack on his back. Had him on his hip and able to get around him. Back to a three-point game. Hatcher, the hot hand. He has another one. Jace Hatcher ties the game again. 44-44. Hatcher had three at the half. He's got nine this quarter. Wow. 2.13 to go here in the third. It's tied at 44. Landreth on the dribble. Across the top of the key. It looks for Gebke. Now off to the left. Boy, another near steal. And it will be a steal. Went off of, went off of Alexander. Potter able to knock it off of Tyler Alexander's hand. Tyler Alexander in some amount of disbelief. I'd say probably about 40% of level of disbelief. He needs to dial it down about 20%. Under two minutes to go, tied at 44. Sisney looking for their first lead in a while. Cut down to Brack. He's fouled before the shot. 
And that's, that's going to go against Tyler Alexander. Three on him, three on the team. Poor old Tyler's talking to himself out there. He says, man, I don't know what I need to do. In the brack, he puts it up no good, but he's fouled by Hill. What a nice play call coming in on the throw in. And that's three on Hill. It's going to be Brack's third trip to the line this quarter. The big junior steps up there again big for difference two having, shots. Big difference having him in there. Do you think? <laughs> he has definitely affected the flow of the game. He certainly has at that. Well, it gives Sisney a little bit of well, an outstanding post presence that when he's on the bench, Featherling and Potter just don't bring. He hits them both. Sisney's uh, in the lead. 46-44, minute 43 to go in the third. What a third quarter for the running lines. Lob pass too high. Down low, it's, it was tipped, I guess. Featherling must have got a hand on that. Oh, wow. Great stat from Hutton. Sisney in the first half had 22. This quarter have 24. <laughs> wow. As Gebke fires, it won't go. Rebound by Hatcher. Up ahead, he finds... Potter back outside Milner. Looking at the high post that Brack doesn't get it to him on the dribble to his right. Down low it goes to Hatcher. He's trapped in the corner. It's a ball thrown away. Stolen. Taken down by uh, Alexander. He heads to the hoop. What a sweet scoop for Tyler Alexander. Ties the game at 46 with one minute to play here in the third quarter. Jesse Milner calls the play, crossing the timeline. He is fouled, heading to the uh, lane. That's going to go against Jordan Gebke, the juniors. Guess coming. what? His third. <laughs> Five on the team. You know, the thing is, these officials are not typically a, uh, you know, they don't blow no. the whistles a lot. No, if they blow it, you know it was a foul. That's exactly right. Better Good crew, crew. They do yep. sectionals. Up with it is Milner. Around the horn. Three on the way from Potter. Didn't have his feet set. Rebound off to Landra. 43 seconds to go. Long pass up ahead. Boy, almost taken away again by Potter. Alexander, tough shot in traffic. No good. Rebound Hatcher. 30 seconds to go. And uh, Coach Bowen says, settle down. Let's hold for one. <laughs> Put both hands up. Hold up. Hold up there, big fella. What kind of game we say it was going to be? A uh, nip and tuck. Uh, oh, Gebke that is number picked, four. Gebke just picks up his fourth foul out of nowhere and for no reason. And Sisney will be in the bonus the rest of the way. He was all over Milner outside. Why be that? They just needed to let the time run. Yeah, that, that's Sisney, a bad fourth foul. Uh, Sisney wasn't going to uh, advance to the hoop. Gebke uh, getting a little greedy, thought he could get a steal. Nine seconds to go. Milner leaves it back for Potter. Potter, top of the key, back to Hatcher. Makes a move. Shot for three. Good! After three periods, Sisney leads Batoka 49-46. Back after these. Having car trouble, need a tow, or just some routine maintenance? Butcher Automotive in Louisville has you covered. Locally owned and operated, Butcher Automotive offers complete vehicle repair services along with tire sales and wheel alignment. They're your local hand-cooked tire and interstate battery dealer. Butcher Automotive offers free local pickup and delivery so your car can be repaired while you're at work or at home. Butcher strives to treat everyone's vehicle as their own. At Butcher Automotive, they don't want you to give them your business. They want to earn it. Briscoe Surplus Sales on the northeast edge of Flora is your one-stop do-it-all shop. Looking for rugged boots and footwear from great brands like Lacrosse, Rocky, and Carolina? They're there. How about top-notch small engine parts and service? Briscoe Surplus Sales has it. Whether you're wiring your switches or switching your wiring, Briscoe Surplus Sales has the solution and the know-how to help you get the job done right the first time. Briscoe Surplus Sales, your one-stop do-it-all shop. Tell you how poorly the running line shot in the first half from three-point line. Even after all those made three-pointers in that quarter by Jace Hatcher, they're still just five for 14. 
three-pointer will not fall there for Gavin Featherling to start the fourth quarter. Landreth in trouble, and Hatcher fouls him over in the... Uh, Guess what? What? Hatcher's third. <laughs> Team's fifth. How many people have three fouls for uh, the uh, running Lions? Three. three. So throwing it in uh, will be Tyler Alexander, the 5'10 senior, working against Potter. Back into the game, Hunter Jolliffe, along with Landreth, and another. And it's another off him again. Another ball knocked out of bounds by Potter, off the hands of uh, Tyler Alexander. Quick and, hello to Bryce Cavacci watching at home. And you know, Jay, uh, Jamie, what I think is affecting Potoka is the uh, small sideline. To the hoop, yep. Brack. They're cutting out away from the hoop, and they're used to being particular level out, and they can't get as far as they're used to. Running jumper will not fall for Alexander, and a five-point lead for Sisney. Milner to the free throw line. Off to the left, he goes to Featherling. Back around to Potter. He didn't thought like, about it, didn't he? He did think hard and long about it. Seven minutes to go in the ball game. Sisney by five. They had a 27-point third quarter. Milner back to Hatcher from the free throw line. He's on fire. Let's go, he screams at the fans. And timeout taken by Coach Eddie. It's a seven-point game, 53-46. Back after this one. Russ Broniker, Boulder Chevrolet Buick in Salem, and Russ Broniker Auto Group in Effingham are your premier sources for new and pre-owned vehicles in Southern Illinois. Their outstanding and diverse selection of GM products and commitment to quality service ensure satisfied customers who return time after time. After over 30 years, your friends at Boulder and the Broniker Auto Group remain committed to the simple philosophy. Offer a quality product and back it up with service that's second to none. That's Boulder Chevrolet Buick in Salem and Russ Broniker Cadillac Buick in GMC in Effingham. Six minutes, 48 seconds to go. What a nice run the running Lions are on. Right now they lead 53-46 to 46 as we uh, continue here in the fourth quarter. Coach Eddie just trying to stop the momentum there, Jamie. Yeah, that was a good timeout. Alexander with it. Tosses it down to Hill. Back outside, Belcher. Cross court. That pass to Alexander. Puts it up for 14. The runner won't fall. Rare miss for Alexander. Featherling will bring it up for, or will hand it off to Milner to bring it up as he works inside to the hoop. Short is the uh, shot is just short. And Alexander just dribbled it out of bounds. He just lost it. Tyler Alexander's a frustrated young man right now. Sisney leads by seven, 619 to go. Of course, Coach Kevin Bowen from the Doug Creel coaching tree. They like to freeze it at some point. Maybe as Hatcher heads to the hoop, he is fouled. He'll I think if he gives it to one Gepke. One. one and one, I'll be two shots. He gave uh, it to Belcher. Belcher, Belcher. Belcher okay, that's his Belcher. second. So, two free throws for Jace Hatcher. First one's off the back iron. He can make it an eight point game with the second. That's a good call. They're going to get Alexander out for a minute, let Coach Eddie talk to him, calm him down a bit. Yeah, he is. A, he's just frustrated. Has not made. Uh, he made a lot of shots in a row before that, but that he's not uh, not feeling well right now. Had three turnovers 46. in that run, also. Yeah. Gebke outside Hill for three. Good. Colton Hill. Trying to drag the Potoka Warriors back into the game. They trail only by five. We go under six minutes to go on the clock, and timeout is taken by the running Lions. We'll take one as well. Back after these words. At Clay City Banking Company, we're all on the same team, regardless of zip code. At home, work, school, or across the country, you can be part of our team with our cutting-edge mobile banking products. From your hand, you can check balances, transfer money, make deposits, and pay bills. Looking for a loan? We've got you covered with our mortgage, agriculture, commercial, and consumer loans. Join our team today. Play City, Floor, Louisville, and Fairfield Banking Companies. We're the hometown banks, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. Welcome back to Sisney. The running lines lead by five. 
54-49. Scores from elsewhere in hockey. St. Louis uh, has already given up two goals in the first six minutes. That's usually not a good sign. That's not good. It's been on a bit of a slide. Trail 2-0 at Edmonton. And of course they need to get out of Canada. They need to leave Canada. Canada is not kind right now to the, uh, run, to the uh, Blues. No update yet from Fairfield. Here it is, the running lines again by five with 5.50 to go. To go. Good timeout by uh, Coach Bowen trying to get his offense set. And if no one, Coach Bowen, if they make another field goal or two, they're going to start trying to burn some clock. With it is Milner. Off it goes to Connor Brack working against Hill. Back outside now to Potter. Count is on. Heading to the hoop into the corner. Featherly across. Hatcher did not take the three. Gives it over to Featherly. Reversal is good. 56-49. Seven point lead. Gebke fade away. Falls in. Able to get it up and over. Connor Brack. Nice play by Gebke. Cuts it again to five. 56-51. Out top. Potter makes a move on Jolly. Nothing there. Back outside. Feathering. Looked like he thought about chucking it. That might have been heart attack causing. Down to Brack. He puts it up. Strong move. Won't work. Gets it back up and in. And once again, once he gets it down there, he's almost playing at will. And another... Steal attempt by Milner, but he's going to commit a foul. No, that is going to be the fourth on. Oh, I'm sorry. That's on the Jolliffe. That's his fourth, team's eighth. So uh, Milner already had the steal. I was looking at the uh, clock. Milner will head to the free throw line with a chance to make it a nine-point contest. It would be the biggest lead for the running lines if he hits them both. He doesn't hit either. Doesn't get the second one. Doesn't hit the first. 440 to go. Belcher across with it. Plays catch with Jolliffe. Back into the game. Alexander. Jolliffe drives to the hoop, and he's going to be hacked. This time it'll be a foul, I believe, on Milner. Yep. Milner second. Teams six. So both teams will be shooting the rest of the way. And Colton Hill will check back in for the uh, Warriors. Stick around after the game. We'll uh, give you the statistics as well as tell you where we will be next if week. If I can add that high. <laughs> be another big week next week. In the hill, he puts it up. No good. Nice board by Jolliffe. He's fouled before the shot, but he's going to head to the free throw line anyway. He'll be there for one and one. As uh, Jesse Milner picks up another foul. Now he's got three. Should be a bonus. Yeah, it is the bonus now, and it will be Jolliff heading to the line, one and one. Coach Eddie was wondering why that was not a two-shot foul. Officials saying, hey, look, they got him on the, he backed into him on the rebound. That's uh, what it was. Lefty misses the front end. Rebound loose. Picked up by Jolliff. He puts it up. He's fouled. He'll go back to the line this time for two shots. Brack or Featherly? It will be Connor Brack. His first foul since uh, the first quarter, though, isn't it, Yeah, only his third. So Jolliffe back to the line this time for two. He hits the first. Four minutes, 25 seconds to go here in the ballgame. You are watching on Wabash Catch TV. Bruce Dickey along with Jamie Hodges. Second free throw is no good. Rebound by Brack. It's 58-52. Here come the running lines. To the hoop, Milner, and he backs it out. Hatcher works against Alexander. Picks up his dribble and needs to get rid of it. Off to Milner. 4.05 remaining here in the ball game. Off to the left corner. Featherling makes room. Puts up the shot that won't go. Brack just about picked up his fourth. Quickly across with it. Nice pass. To Gebke down low from Alexander, and that hit the hands, I think. Yeah, and that was through the hands, wasn't it? yes. So that cuts that lead to four. Sisney's led by as many as eight, now lead by four. 340 to go in the ball game. Into the corner, Gavin Featherling outside Brendan Potter, working against Jolliffe. 
Man to man for Potoka. Count is on. To a cutting Milner, he puts it up and in. He is fouled, and it, that might be it for Gebke. Gebke got his legs a little bit tangled up with Milner. Gebke's out. And that was it. Gebke will head to the bench. Five fouls, Coach Eddie. Once he was beat, he's got to. Coach Eddie uh, is uh, wanting to have a word with Darren Greenwalt, and he will send in Matthew Landreth. Dude's good officiating. He'll go listen to him, but he wanted to wait until Coach Eddie had already put the man in the game. He's going to listen to him, but he wasn't going to slow down the game. That's right. Free throws no good for the end of one. It's 60 to 54 on the drive. Jolla. As it's stolen away, the pass almost taken by Brack, but recovered by Hill. He loses the handle out of bounds. Wipes his hands on his pants. He's got wet. He's sweaty. <laughs> he's got some sweat issues. Was Coach Eddie's for a towel. way too far on the floor. He was, well, he's okay. trying to call timeout. That's fine. 316 to go here in the ball game. Timeout, Patoka. We'll be back after this word. At Back and Body Works Chiropractic, we help you feel better naturally. We can help your whole family from newborns to the elderly. We offer auricular therapy for smoking cessation and appetite control. We use acupuncture to improve health and well-being in the mind and body. We offer high-quality herbal supplements for adults and children, as well as CBD oil. We also offer exercise classes for women of every age, size, and fitness level. Stop by and see us on the square in Louisville. Call my mommy. Three sixteen to go here. <laughs> the we're out. This game. game's wore me out. Okay? No. <laughs> Can't do simple math. <laughs> hey, next week we've got a big week for you again. Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday night basketball. Tuesday we'll be in uh, Louisville as Neoga and North Clay uh, battle again. They battled in the tournament just this week. That will be a good one. Uh, Thursday we'll be in Fairfield, the Hamilton County Foxes, Lady Foxes taking on Fairfield. And then back to uh, Louisville and in Salem, two games on Friday night. North Clay against Dietrich, Freeburg against Salem. So keep an eye out. Keep it all right here on Wabash Catch TV. Three minutes remaining in the basketball game. Sisney with the ball and the six-point lead. Hatcher off to Fedling. Finds a cutting Brack. Brack to the hole. He puts it up and in. Back to an eight-point game. Sisney on a big second half. Jolla. Leaves it for Alexander. He's going to shoot. Three at the top of the keys. No good. And a foul is going to be called, I believe, on the rebound underneath. I think Jace. Pardon me. It's going to be Jesse Milner. That's his fourth. Team's ninth. So Milner has picked up a ton of fouls here in this uh, fourth quarter. And Coach uh, Bowen just uh, got his attention and pointed at four and then pointed to his head. Yep. Use your head. Don't get the fifth. The first of the one and one is no good. Rebound taken down by Brack. Here comes Sisney. Two and a half minutes to go. Running Lions by eight. They've trailed by nine. Down to Brack. He puts it up and in. Biggest lead of the game for Sisney. Up by 10, 64-54. 2-15. Three on the way. Oh, it's, it's blocked. It's partially blocked. Rebound Featherling. He puts it up and in. Featherling got a part, not Featherling. Rebound was by uh, Alexander, put it up and in. And then a foul by Landreth. Who got the block on that? Did Featherling get that block? That must yeah. be why he got in my head. So Landreth is first, team's 10th. This should be two. Heading to the free throw line, Jesse Milner for two shots. 64-56 the score. He can bump it back to a four possession game. It's still three, but he hits the first. Nine-point contest. Misses the second. Long rebound. Jolliffe with it. Up it goes to Belcher. Across to Alexander. Three on the way. Good. Not a surprise at all seeing who took the shot, right? 
Timeout taken by Patoka. 155 to go. It's a six-point game. Back right after this word. It won't always be new. It won't always be clean. It won't always be flawless. But it'll always be yours. So how do you know it'll be protected? To solve the big challenges of tomorrow, take simple steps today. At Country Financial, when you're ready to start, we're ready to help with auto insurance. See me, Alex Atwood, and Sisney for your insurance and financial needs. Welcome back to Sisney and Jamie. This has uh, been a battle. Look at some of those statistics, statistics over there. From three point, Patoka, 47%. That's outstanding. Yeah, you'd think they'd be leading. If right. you heard that stat, you'd think they'd be leading. If you heard 47 versus 33, but then you look at the two point is 74 to 59 in Sisney's yeah. favor. The free throws are 70% to 50% in Sisney's yeah. favor. He's got turnovers on there, turnovers and rebounds. He's going to switch. Oh, it. 11 turnovers for Sisney, 13 for Patoka, 20 rebounds for Sisney, 17 for Patoka. Uh, of course easy. he has them. Of course he does. <laughs> He's John Hutton. He's a genius. F- Get it for us. There you go. Uh, Featherling brings it across, gets it back out to uh, Milner to run things. Sisney uh, going to be content probably to burn some clock. There's a foul call against Matthew Landreth and oh, back his, to the line. He's the guy that if you only one you can have fouling. Yeah, give the foul. He just has two. Situation for the rest of the guys. Hill's got a ton. To the line for two is uh, Jesse Milner, and he hits the first. See, now people are going to think I was booing the cheerleaders earlier and as I'm talking during Jesse Milner's Yeah, you're, you're really. Uh, people hate me at Sisney. I am disliked. He hit them both. No announcer jinx there at all. I was thinking if you were talking right as it was dead quiet and he's shooting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> might just, be time to pause, Might Bruce. be time to shut my yapper. Alexander on the drive. The runner is no good, but he's going to be fouled by Brack, I believe. It's either going to be Brack or Featherling. It will be Connor Brack picking up his fourth. Just Minute 31 to go. How many timeouts has uh, Patoka taken? Do you keep a track of that? Two or three. First of two is up and good for Tyler Alexander. He's off to he's having a fine game tonight. Scoring wise, as Jolliff's gonna take a seat. Coach Eddie bringing in uh, Austin Hinkle. He'll have the green light to foul whoever he wants. Alexander hit them both. It's back to a six-point contest. Across with it. Miller oh he is pushed. He'll head back to the free throw line. I think he gave it a Belcher. They did. That's his third. There was a choice. Belcher uh, had it. Alexander had a choice to Alexander, be one. Uh, Alexander could have been the choice. And I think Landreth was in the, uh, scu- the scrum as well. First of two is no good for Jesse Milner. Minute 27 to go. And back into the game comes Hunter Jolliffe. Number double zero for Patoka. Jolliffe, Alexander, Belcher, and Hill along with Landreth for the uh, Patoka Warriors. Gebke has fouled out. Second free throw is good. He hits one out of two. Sisney takes a timeout. It's a full. We'll take a timeout as well. Back after this word. Welcome to Zane Building tonight. My dad and Ryan work here. They sell lumber, paint, doors, windows, pumping, electrical, and much more. Oh yeah, they sell guns too. Zane Building tonight on Ride 45 and Pools It's a cool place. We are monitoring all of your preventative health. I'm Marlissa Boyles. I'm a nurse practitioner here at Clay Medical Center, which is one of our 11 clinics out of the Christopher Rural Health Planning Corporation. We have implemented PCMH, Patient Care Medical Home. We work in collaboration with many specialists. This helps in tracking what you need for your aid preventative screening. We would love to have you there in our family. Visit us at crhpc.org. 
Welcome back to Sisney. Running lines lead by seven with a minute 27 to go. Landers will toss into Jolliffe, who will bring it across. It's going to be a long minute 27, I got a feeling, Bruce. Uh, I think you're right. To the high post, it goes to Colton Hill. Hands it off to Landers, cut into the hoop. Shot won't fall, tip around, picked up by Hill, up and in. Connor Brack unable to be aggressive going for the basketball as uh, Jesse Milner is fouled again in backcourt. That's going to go against Matthew Landreth. So he's got three all of a sudden. They've got to quit fouling Jesse. I'm going to run out of room to put down free throws. Well, you might need to move into the overtime column, but then again, we might have to use that. Exactly. Milner, first is good. He has shot. I'm sitting there looking at you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. (laughs) Oh, my heavens. Look at all those free throws. He misses the second. We got bodies on the floor everywhere. Rebound by Hill up to Alexander. On the drive, Jolla fires it across. Ball's kicked. Skate save and a beauty by uh, Gavin Featherling. So, Patoka to throw in underneath their own hoop. Alexander to toss. I guess he's going to get it back. Outside to Landreth. Watch for Alexander in the corner. He was well defended. They couldn't get it to him. Landreth for three at the top of the key. No good. Rebound. Lost out of bounds. Last touch by Brack. Under a minute to go. What? It just, we're barely getting eight seconds to clip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Between fouls and out of bounds. This clock cannot go fast enough for Kevin Bowen. That's exactly right. As Colton Hill has it. Fires it down. Intended for Jolliffe, but he wasn't cutting that close to the Thought he was going to zig and he zagged. Yep. Nearly hit the uh, Patoka cheerleaders. So throwing in will be Gavin Featherling. Restraining line is in use at the uh, good timeout. Sidelines only, by the way, and not the end lines. Timeout taken by Sisney. Got to be a 30. Up by six with a 50 and a half seconds to go. We'll take one as well back after this word. It is all things new at Zimdar's heating, air conditioning, and appliance repair. We have a new line of heating and cooling equipment and new technicians. Our new equipment line offers 24 months free financing and excellent warranty coverage. Our experienced service technicians can provide you with quality service and repairs on all brands of HVAC equipment. Zimdar's has been serving Clay County and the surrounding areas for over 23 years. The employees of Zimdar's are here to help, so call local and call Zimdar's. Man, I'm glad we got that off button. Yeah, I don't care. 50 (laughs) seconds remaining. Both teams in the Super Bonus the rest of the way. 60 with just one timeout remaining, I believe, Jamie. Is that correct? Sure. (laughs) Let's go with that. (laughs) Yes, I believe 60 has 130 remaining. And they can run the baseline following that made shot. Throwing it in is Featherly. He gets it into Milner. He lost the handle, but no, his last him. touch by Landreth. And now, Featherling won't be able to go anywhere. No. Joey Eddie gets out of the way. No, but you've got more angles to work with. Yeah. And it comes to Milner through uh, traffic, waiting to get fouled, and he's going to get fouled by Belcher. A little bit of a, a late whistle there. Belcher caught him on the way around. and uh, uh, Not Belcher. I think they gave it to Landreth. Well, he was pointing it. He must have been pointing at uh, Milner to head of the line. Yeah, that'd that be makes Bel- more sense. That's his fourth. So 45 seconds to go. First of two is good. Bumps it to a three-possession game. Jolliffe checks back in for the offensive end. Heading to the bench, Austin Hinkle. Gebke's already fouled out. Second one. Short and rolls across. Eight-point game, 71-63. Jolliff quickly up to Hill. Three on the way. It's off the back iron. Boy, that looked like that was He's going to get across there and dribble around. Wait to... You're running out of room. Yeah. Milner uh, takes a deep breath after the uh, getting fouled, kind of shrugs. 
He is tired of going to the free throw line. Look at that right arm hanging. Okay. That... <laughs> I didn't see who got the foul. Landreth, 12. Yeah, Belcher fouled out. I thought he got the call last time. So, with two, uh, with an eight-point lead, make it nine. 35 seconds to go. He can make it a four-possession ball game. I believe Jesse Milner is, is who Coach Warren wants at the line. Missed that one. Still a nine-point game. 33 seconds to go. Yeah. Three on the way. Oh, my goodness. The one thing you don't no do. No good. And, boy, Coach Bowen was yelling, don't foul, don't foul. As they ran down the court, Brendan Potter didn't hear him, and he uh, drills Tyler Alexander, putting the senior to the free throw line for three shots. This is uh, what causes gray hair for middle-aged men. The, the dependency on teenagers in shorts. <laughs> Lots of gray hair. One and two are good. Third one upcoming for Tyler Alexander. He'll head to the bench if he hits this next one. Keaton Wilkerson checks in. And he does hit it. He'll head to the bench, replaced by Anthony Buonara. So, it'll be foul and see what happens. Six-point game into Milner. Milner back over to Featherly. He's fouled by Landreth, Matthew Landreth. And he should be done, I believe. As checking back in will be Tyler Alexander. Nope. Four. That's why I thought the other one was on Belcher. Not oh, Landreth. that's why we're. Yeah. That's where I got turned around. Chance to make a three possession game with either free throw. He does with the first. It's a seven point lead, 73 66. Jolliffe back in along with Alexander. Patoka's running out of clock. Sisney's hitting too many free throws. The second one is good as well. Maybe they need you talking during them. I suppose so. Three-pointer on the way for Alexander is good again. He cuts it to a five-point game. Timeout on the court taken by Patoka. We'll take one as well back after this work. When it comes to your banking, you have as many options as colors in the crayon box. That's why you can bank your way to Topless State Bank. What works best for you may be different from what works best for your neighbor. To Topless State Bank is built to serve all your banking needs. Whether it's online banking, mobile check deposit, text banking, or just stopping in to see them at one of their three convenient locations. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender, it's to Topless State Bank. Banking made personal since 19. 19- 13. I got to tell you, Jamie, looking at the uh, each team's average scores over the course of the season, I did not see both teams getting into the 70s here. No, this has been quite the up and down game, especially considering the first the halftime score was 26 to 22. This has been an unreal second half. Both teams came out just hitting everything they shot, Bruce, and it's not like they weren't well defended. You can tell by the fouls they were well defended. Sisney already with 27 points in the second half. Or 50, pardon me, 52 points in the second half. They'd like to have that in some games, and their oh, record yeah. would be greatly improved. Oh, absolutely right. So, throwing it in will be Featherling. He's got Brack along with uh, the rest of the starters, Hatcher and Potter and Milner. Ball not yet in, and it comes to Potter. He'll be uh, grabbed by uh, Keaton Wilkerson. And with 17.9 seconds to go. Foul went actually against Austin Hinkle. Must have given a little shove from behind. Brendan Potter will head to the line for two shots. He can make it a three possession game again. Potter having him. Not going to say it. <laughs> you, you believe in the announcer curse. I do not. I, I understand. I do not. I have too many bad teams I root for. Yeah, that's true, too. Got to believe in something. Potter hit them both. Potter Back only, to a seven-point game. Potter's only missed one free throw tonight. Long three for Alexander's off the back iron. And a foul on the rebound is going against Jolliffe. He I should, believe Hatcher's going to be shooting. And Jolliffe should be done. 
It will check that, not Hatcher. It's going to be Milner again. No. You've got to put it in the overtime. I'm going ball. to now. I'll go ahead and jinx us there. 12 seconds to go. It'd be pretty tough for uh, Patelka to make it back uh, now. I saw Reggie Miller against the Knicks. Yeah, that's true. Kevin Bowen would have to th- throw some chairs and uh, throw a kid out there or something like that. <laughs> Going to a cursing fit. <laughs> Could happen. I don't see it happening. First one's no good. He's tired. Second one's no good as well. Ten seconds to go. Alexander could cut it to four. He uh, shoots a two. It won't go. Rebound Featherling, and that will do it. The running Lions are going to improve to 11 and 10 as they knock off the Potoka Warriors 76 to 69. Patoka falls to 8 and 12. Tough ball game. Tough, well played by both squads, but uh, Sisti the winner tonight. We'll be back after these words for final statistics as well as tell you where we're going to be next week here on Wabash Catch TV. Back after these. Shy Diesel Service Company is your anything diesel full service center and fuel injection shop. Shy Diesel offers the quickest turnaround times to get you back on the road. Shy Diesel can service any diesel engine from agricultural, construction, heavy duty truck, and automotive. Let Shy rebuild your pump, injectors, or turbos. Need custom fuel lines? Shy has you covered. With a drive in service, they offer a variety of services, including oil changes, engine rebuilds, DOT inspections, and DPF cleanings. For unmatched quality, think Shy Diesel Service Company. Anything. Diesel. Are you tired of searching high and low in those big chain stores to find what you need and deserve some royal treatment? Come to the King, Rural King in Salem. The friendly folks at Rural King will never leave you searching for those hard to find items on your list. Farm, home, sporting, automotive, and clothing. Oh, and did I mention we also have everything else, along with all the quality brands that you deserve. Salem Rural King is a proud retailer of the steel product line. Your searching is over when you know the King, Rural King in Salem. Salem. And welcome back to Sisney. The running Lions came into tonight's ball game averaging 48 points uh, per game. And they scored how many? 54 in the second half? A bunch. 54 in the second half, 27 in the third, 27 in the fourth, as they knock off Patoka here by a final of 76 to 69. Yeah, are you done here? I'm done, finally. All right, let's have them. All right, first off for Patoka. They were led in scoring by Tyler Alexander with 27. Tough game. Followed by Jordan Gepke with 18. Colton Hill with 11. Drew Belcher with 8. Hunter Joliffe with 3. And Austin Hinkle with 2. They had quarters of 9, 17, 20, and 23. You know, and you mentioned 27 points for Tyler Alexander. He, he had, had four, 4 at halftime. At halftime. Four. Four. All right, Sisney running Lions. They were led in scoring by Jesse Milner with 25. Yeah. Almost just from the line. Yeah. We'll just say that. Followed by Jace Hatcher <laughs> and Connor up. Jace Hatcher and Connor Brack with eighteen apiece. Uh, Gavin Fairling with ten and Brandon Potter with five. They had quarters of ten, twelve, twenty seven, and what twenty seven. Yeah. That's a wild one. That's a been a fun game. Yeah, that's a I'm fun game. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm thirsty. Hey, folks, uh, thanks very much for watching. Next week, we have four games on tap. On Tuesday night, we'll be in Louisville as uh, Neoga takes on the uh, the Neoga Indians taking on the North Clay Cardinals. And then on Thursday night, we'll be in, uh, where are we Thursday night? In Fairfield, Hamilton County Lady Foxes taking on the Lady Mules. Then two games on Friday night. As uh, we'll be split and cruise, it'll be Dietrich at North Clay, followed uh, or also uh, Freeburg at Salem. So uh, look for that next week. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in to Wabash Catch TV tonight. We do appreciate you uh, watching wherever and however you are. Thank you so much, Jamie Thanks Hodges, for outstanding work uh, for all of us here at Wabash Catch TV. My name is Bruce Dickey. Reminding you tonight's final score, it was Sisney knocking off Patoka 76-69. So long from Sisney High School.